This is one of my favorite sets of before and after images to show. Believe it or not, the same lantern is pictured in both photos here. One was in the morning when I bought it, one was later that evening after I'd cleaned it up. The man I bought it from sold it to me for a toonie, because he said it was a piece of garbage. The only thing I needed for it was a new globe. It's missing a globe. But look at that fount. This is what everybody wonders. The, the vent was easy, it's just covered with paint. I cleaned the paint off, but that, that, that fount, it's crusty, it's covered in rust. Could it ever look good? Well, as it turned out, it did. In fact, it even had very little freckling or corrosion on it that went through the nickel. So I want to show you the process, because I've, I've been asked quite a few times, I want to show you the process of how I got from that before picture to that after picture. And we're going to do that with a 236 I picked up recently. It, it isn't nearly this bad, but I can show you the process. Enjoy. All right, I think this will be our final video using our 236 model who's been so gracious with us and having him torn apart and, and all his flaws found. Um, the last thing I'm going to do with this uh, before we put it back together, uh, the fount actually looks quite nice. Um, the nickel is in pretty good shape. It's got some worn spots. It's going to have some freckles. Unfortunately, it looks like someone cleaned it up with a Scotch-Brite pad or something at some point because it's got some surface scratching. But all of this should polish out. So I'm going to pull the pump out and the, the check valve. I'm going to take the fuel cap off. Uh, and I'm going to boil this in a, a mild citric acid solution. Um, I've inspected the inside already. It had a lot of debris inside, but I don't see any rust. Now, the, the top part won't rust, as I said in the other video. The, the upper part is brass. The bottom is, is steel, and that's where you're, you're going to have rust. Uh, but I put a flashlight in there. I don't see anything that looks bad. It's held pressure. It has no pinholes. But I'm going to go ahead and submerge it in citric acid. That will take care of any rust that's on the inside. Um, and uh, it will break down any corrosion on the outside. And um, the next time I see it, we'll have it on the bench grinder on a buffing wheel. And we'll see how much of this we can clean up. Well, here we are in the kitchen. Um, despite what it looks like, this is not lantern stew. This is that 236 fount. And it's boiling away, or I should say simmering away in a relatively mild citric acid solution um, and uh, we'll see what it comes out like. Okay, the fount's out of the citric acid. In fact, it's been sitting overnight so it's good and dry. Um, putting it in the pot of citric acid, let me keep an eye on it. Uh, the acid will, if it's left in too long or the acid is too strong, it will eventually eat through the nickel. Um, so if it's in a pot, I can keep an eye on it. I submerged it in the pot, as I said, because there was some debris and some surface rust on the, the base on the inside, and I wanted to remove that. The citric acid will take care of that. Um, if the inside was perfectly fine, if there was no debris coming out, uh, rather than immerse the whole thing in citric acid, what I would probably do is soak some paper towels in citric acid, put this on a, on a dish, and then cover it with the paper towels and let it sit for about 20 minutes. I check it periodically. Uh, the thing I'm looking for on the outside is uh, these, what are now pink spots. They were black. That was corrosion in the nickel. What's happened is the citric acid has dissolved that corrosion and it's left the, the metal exposed underneath, so it's pink now, so I can see the brass. Uh, when I was all done with it, because I had citric acid inside, I flushed it thoroughly with water. Uh, I rolled up some paper towels and stuck them in the holes and turned it upside down. Uh, until the paper towels, I uh, did that about three times until the paper towels were no longer accumulating much water. And then I poured a few ounces of methyl hydrate inside. Uh, alcohol absorbs water. Uh, so pour the methyl hydrate in there, rotate it all around, dump it out, and repeat. And then I let it sit overnight and it's, it's bone dry inside. Uh, you don't want water left in there, it'll, it'll create more rust. So at this point, we're ready to put it on the buffing wheel. It looks pretty good. Um, these pink spots where the brass is exposed, I know not to be too aggressive with those uh, because it, the, the buffing wheel may start to eat through the nickel. Uh, but uh, other than that, everything's looking pretty good and I think it'll look great. See you at the buffing wheel. All right, here we go. I've got a medium buffing wheel on my bench grinder and what I'm using is White Jewelers Rouge. 
add a little bit there. And what I want to do is uh, hit the fount in this direction first, and then I'll hit it in this direction. So I'll start with the rim. And I don't apply much pressure. Basically, I'm just holding it up to the buffing wheel. One of the things I'm looking for is this is covered in surface scratches. Like I said, I think somebody took a scotch Brite pad to this at one point, or maybe steel wool. Um, I'm looking for those scratches to disappear. I'm also looking for the pink spots, the exposed brass to, to start to turn brassy as opposed to pink. That's pretty good. Again, some of these scratches aren't going to come out. But it is a lot shinier as you can see. I'm going to do a little, little more work around the fuel cap, but most of this I'm going to have to do by hand. Here we are all polished up. I've used some Mother's Mag polish around the fuel cap. The nickel's often thin there, and you can see it's actually uh, some brass has started to appear through there, um, but uh, it is cleaned up. It's shinier. Uh, there are lots of freckles on here in the nickel, uh, places where the nickel has worn through. The brass is exposed a bit here and there, but as you can, as you can see, it's much shinier uh, and it's much cleaner. Um, I know a lot of people, and, and I started out this way, a lot of people would uh, use something like Simple Green uh, to clean the grease off, which is still a good idea. Um, citric acid will take care of most of that as well. If it was just dirty, I'd use Simple Green on it or soap and water to clean it off. Uh, and um, then from there, start using uh, polish like Mother's Polish or Zep or Blue Magic, something like that on a terry cloth and just start polishing and polishing. Um, in the past, I've used uh, polish like that with some 4 aught steel wool that's very fine. Uh, that can take off oxidation. Um, I wish I had one of these to, to demo um, that was just uh, dull and green from oxidation all over. Um, I don't have one of these. This was the, the closest I could find at the, at the moment. Um, but uh, citric acid takes care of that much more easily and it doesn't scratch. So you can soak it in some citric acid, take the oxidation off, and then you're ready to polish. Uh, and I find using the buffing wheel, you don't have to use any pressure, just hold it against the buffing wheel and use that jeweler's rouge, which is a very, very fine polish. Uh, and that will take um, most of the, the, the oxid or remains of the oxidation. It'll take the scratches out. It'll buff uh, most of the dirt and spots out. And as you can see, uh, it looks great now. Well, here she is. I'll put back together. Of course, everything else has been polished as well, but we're focusing on that fount. Notice the difference? It wasn't bad looking to begin with, but it's clean, everything's shiny, we got most of the scratches out, and all the corrosion is gone. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.